Hi, and welcome back to Retail Store Innovative Management Training, presented by Store Report. My name is Bill Scott. It is not possible to teach this course without delving into the past and describing how I came upon these experiences which span 42 years of active participation in the real world. In other words, these are not theories, they are based on documented fact. In 2003, after serving the convenience store industry for more than two decades, I began to experiment in my customers' stores by attempting to solve common problems shared by many, if not all of them. I had identified virtually hundreds of cases where money was being lost in these businesses, but as a software developer, all I could do was write articles about it. But I was a small voice in the industry and continuously overshadowed by those that had built their supporting industries around the status quo. Before I begin, I want to emphasize that I am not referring to national chains such as 7-Eleven, Circle K, and others who were basically small grocery stores that happened to sell gas. That's a different market entirely. If I go back to when I got started in 1978 in working with convenience stores, back before there was a National Association of Convenience Stores, it didn't take me long to figure out that grocery suppliers rarely owned but virtually controlled the industry. Let me explain. Most of my convenience store customers began as wholesalers that sold gasoline, diesel, oil, greases, tires, and batteries to retailers, industrial accounts, and farmers. Awakening to the notion that by cutting out the middleman and going directly to the consumer, they could make more profit from their fuel sales. But being wholesalers, they had little to no or no knowledge of the retail business. But how hard could it be? Looking for help, they turned to local grocery suppliers for advice. After all, they were becoming retail grocers and they would have to buy them from wholesale grocery suppliers, so it made sense to go and talk to them. Grocery suppliers were eager to talk to them because it created a new opportunity for them to add more customers at greater profits than they could earn from traditional grocery stores. The conversation went something like this. We want to build a few small stores to sell more gasoline to the public, and we thought we would add some convenience items in the building, so after getting gas, customers could come inside to pay, use the bathroom, get coffee, Cokes, cigarettes, etc. But we don't know a thing about retail. We thought maybe if we bought those items from you, you might help us choose the right products to stock. The supplier readily agreed, but he had no idea what he had just agreed to. The retailer saw this as a promise made by the supplier to manage the store's inventory. It wasn't long before the supplier was forced to make changes in his business to live up to that promise. As the years went by, convenience store retailers became more and more dependent upon grocery suppliers to fulfill what the retailers saw as a promise. And try as they may, suppliers are simply not capable of knowing what sells best in their retailer stores, how much the stores actually need to stock, and how the inventory needs to be priced. So the supplier intentionally overfills the store with product to prevent the occurrences of stockouts. And as far as prices go, he simply provides the retailer with the manufacturer's MSRP or marks up all inventory to retail based upon a common market percentage agreed upon by category. Example, everything in the candy department is marked up for a 45% profit. Getting in over their head, suppliers employed people to visit these stores and take stock of what the store was selling. But these pre-salesmen worked on commission. The more they shoved into the stores, the more they made, and it was the perfect setup for abuse. They intentionally searched out empty places to put inventory where it doesn't belong, 
shoving other wholesalers' inventory aside if necessary. I've always said if you paint a door on the inside of a cooler, a drink delivery guy will freeze to death waiting for the door to open. Now I want to make it clear that I am not disparaging suppliers for wrongdoing. I personally never met a supplier who did not have their customer's well-being in mind. The retailer is just as guilty, if not more so, for the current state of the industry. The supplier provides a valuable service to the customer, but the supplier is just not capable of managing their customer's inventory, and truthfully, they don't want the responsibility. In future lessons, we're going to give you tips and techniques on putting an end to these kinds of things, which will result in taking back control of your store to the tune of doubling your profits in the first year and seeing results in the first 90 days. And before you go, be sure and select the subscribe button below and the little bell that will alert you when we post another video. You may write to us by sending an email to storereportinfo at gmail.com and we will respond as time allows. Hope to see you next time.